All right, guys, so we finally got around to it. Why music is a haram. So yeah, we learned from a couple of videos back, I don't know which one it was, that music is haram. Now, we don't know why. Apparently, some of you guys have said that because it like it's the lyrics and also it, can, it alters your emotions and your feelings. And that's not good. So that's what I've heard so far. So that's all I know. But what do you think? Why do you think it's wrong? Man, I mean, I understand some of like the modern rap music, how what they say can be uh, haram for sure. And like some of the music videos kind of crazy. Right. But like, it's what, a vibe. what about like Beethoven? Like, what does Beethoven make you feel? It's like just calm. It, yeah, it does it alter your it does alter your emotions. It calms it can, you though, no? But it can make you sad. It can make you happy, depending on what the style of music is. So we'll see what the, they say. Let's just yeah, get let's into see. it. So that's not music, right there. I, that's not music. That is Quran re recitation. But if you didn't know that, then it would seem ironic, wouldn't it? Like if you didn't know, <laughs> uh, uh, what? Hey, hold on a second. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> This is the Quran uh, recitation. Like, mm. but what about like the background, like harmonizing the effects? Oh, like, there's no way. Yeah, that, that is, is weird. They said is... musical instruments are haram. Hold on a second now. Hold like, up. Wait even, a even, because that is pretty much a song with the lyrics in it is. the Quran. You're absolutely it, those right. Those are lyrics. They're just different. No, no, no. That's Quran recitation, which is allowed. I get the music part, though, with the instruments. That's like, what? No, I get that part, though. Yeah. The instruments. That, they, I thought you weren't allowed instruments, man. Let's change the words according to the understanding of the companions. They're of mankind. They are those people who indulge in singing and in music to mislead people from the remembrance of Allah. This is what this ayah actually means that they purchase this music and they indulge in singing and dancing and everything else that goes along with it why to mislead men from the path of Allah i.e. this is one of the tricks and one of the footsteps and one of the trap of shaitan this is one of the ways that shaitan he entraps these people now let's look at the hadith the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said amongst my ummah there will be those people who will permit zina they will permit till they will permit alcohol and they will also permit musical instruments so if all of these things are, hal are haram. Why then does the Prophet wasallam then mention music as well? The point here is this. He is saying amongst my ummah, a group of people, misguided people, lost people who are following their desires, they will come and they will permit these things. They will come and they will permit these things. Subhanallah. Ibn Masood radiallahu an, this great companion, he said, singing increases the heart in hypocrisy just as water increases the vegetation. So just as you see the plant and it grows, subhanallah, do not cause hypocrisy to grow in your heart the same way. Do not water your heart with hypocrisy, which is singing and music. And now, Ikhwani, in the 21st century, we have these so-called intellectuals and they come and they say, yes, music is permitted. Music is allowed. It calms you down, etc. And they call themselves intellectuals. By Allah, they are not intellectuals. Rather, they are the ones whom Allah says Allah. in their hearts is a disease and Allah has caused their disease to increase because they follow their own whims and their desires and they put the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to one side they put i don't know man like these are i mean if you're an if you're a muslim then it makes sense because what you're saying is music's a distraction from allah and but then there's two things that i gotta say the first thing is that basically everything is a distraction from allah right like essentially most things are a distraction from allah and um so i guess most things are haram and the like second working thing, like yeah if, like anything if you're, if you're doing I, literally anything yeah anything can be a distraction from allah and the second thing is is that I just don't find the uh, that argument super compelling for me. I don't know. I just don't find it very compelling. I find that listening to music can calm you down. It can make you happy. Like when he was explaining that, I was just thinking of like you know that Coldplay song, "Him for the Weekend," mm -hmm. and I was just thinking, uh, uh. yeah, like, and like I was just thinking that's that's so hype. <laughs> like I was just thinking like so music can make you happy and things, and so I I don't know. I just think that music's good overall. So I haven't heard anything yet that would change my opinion. Yeah, you agree? Yeah. Oh, the narration. 
traditions to one side. They put the understanding of the companions to one side. These are a people who have left the way of the believers and rather they are just going upon this path which is going to lead them to destruction. Now let's look at some of the lyrics in the songs that our brothers and sisters listen to today. The first thing that we find in these mu in these music, musical songs, etc. is that they encourage open fornication. They encourage open lewdness and, you know, this looseness that everything is okay. It's, it's fine. You can go and fornicate. You can go and do whatever you like. They talk about love and they talk about sex like it is nothing. And they are like animals. They are like animals and they will encourage you to be like animals. The fact is, you are becoming desensitized. Ikhwani, the second thing that... You see, we, we've we already said that we completely agree with this in, in terms of uh, Islamic perspective. If you're, a, if you're a Muslim and you're listening to like Polo G talk about how he has <laughs> hookers and prostitutes and he spends this money at the club, it's like, yes, that's all haram. And it can encourage you sub... Uh, so what's the word? Sublicity or whatever, or subconsciously to do those things. And so, yes, of course it's wrong. But what we're talking about is like, like even if it was like, as Vlad said earlier, Beethoven, right? Like, what if it's just like, not even like, there's no lyrics per se, it's just music. It's just, or even if there is lyrics, but what if the lyrics aren't necessarily trying to lead you down any path? And even if they are trying to influence you, maybe it's good. Like, what about yeah, like, a song about a law? No, or do you know, um, I don't know. like back in the day, before all these rappers started saying about this and that, like what, Bruno Mars? <laughs> I'll catch a grenade for you, like the good, yeah. about the good stuff. The actually, well, like, even that, like, like back then, songs were a lot nicer. They were still like, there was still some stuff in there, but it was a lot less uh, upfront. Like, if you listen to Ice Spice or you listen to like Cardi B or any of these people, like, they're very upfront with what they're talking, very disgustingly open about what they're talking about. <laughs> but if you look at like, like, forget even like the old stuff, like 2010, 2000s, whatever. Just look at like church music. Like, like obviously, me and you are not going to be, you know, working out to church music. But I'm just saying, like, is church music haram? And if it is, why? Like, I, I just don't understand, like, singing in church, hallelujah. Like, why is that haram? You know what I mean? Hey, man. That's just praise Take to God. Away. That's Satan. Perhaps. Trapping you. Shaitan. These songs, they encourage is drugs and alcohol. Subhanallah. How many of the rap and R&B songs are just based 90% around drugs and alcohol? We agree with if all this. Perhaps the most important thing, the most dangerous thing, these songs are full of words of kufr, full of words of disbelief, other words of kufr. In Bollywood songs, those brothers who watch, listen to Bollywood don't think that you're off the hook. We have women dancing and there's music and they're semi-naked. And what are they singing? Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Yes, Subhanallah, Amma Yushrikun. Glory be to Allah above what you associate with Him as partners. Why? Why are we as Muslims allowing this? Why are we watching it? Why do we have our children next to us and they are watching it? I want to mention something which I came across today and Subhanallah. <coughs> It was very, very, it was a scary experience. It's this type of music which they call dubstep. And let me come and show you what it sounds like. So we went onto YouTube and we just typed in dubstep. Ikhwani, I clicked on one video and by Allah, I could only listen to 10 seconds because it felt like something was dragging my heart towards it. And I was so. <laughs> Wait, something was dragging my heart towards it? You getting addicted? We're like, this is too good. I can't. <laughs> okay, I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying. Never mind, I know what he's saying. What the heck was that? What? 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 Okay, whoa. That was Satan coming over. Yeah, no, no, no. He, he's right, I guess. That, no, but like, that, that was such a quiz. That was funny. Just the first video we that clicked on. That was funny. Oh. <laughs> oh, you just start reciting oh, the Quran. But yeah, no, he he. I don't know. I was scared for my heart that I turned it off and I had to begin listening to Quran. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Come on, there's no way. That's that, a, that's, that's an exaggeration. That's gotta be. There's no way you like listen to it. So, burr, 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 and you're like, yeah, boom, boom, like boom, 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 I gotta go read the Quran. I gotta go read yeah, the Quran. I don't know. Because this, it is disgusting, Ikhwani. The type of music that it is, this is no doubt it's an just, evil, evil thing. Like, what? It's just loud noises. It's just dubstep. It's loud noises. It's not even saying anything. How can a noise be to, like, evil? The... Oh, this is iconic. Can you, I just, I just imagine him listening to this and be like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, 
it's like it's not my cup of tea, but like still, I don't know. I was, Shit, I enjoyed that. I like this. Shaped on. They are rooms which are just dedicated to dubstep. And if you walk in there, these rooms are dark. There is little lighting. Everybody in that room is in a trance and they are all using drugs. He will lose his mind and they will see, they will see that it was something subhanAllah. What if like, I'm just playing games? Playing Overwatch and I have dubstep playing. Or I'm streaming and I'm like, hey Matt, hey, hey Jerry, thanks for the 10, man. And you have the dubstep in the background, you just stream it. It's like shaitan. An ulterior, uh, it's ulterior haram, reality. And, and no yeah. ikhwani, that the words of Allah. The and keep in mind, we're not like, obviously, this is just his opinion, so we're not judging oh, anybody. Uh, but like, I just think that a lot of times, personally, that it's exaggerated. Like, a lot of these claims are exaggerated. Like, I felt my heart race, and it was like, I think it'll read the Quran to settle me now. And it's like, you just listen to dubstep, you know what I mean? It's not like you saw a baby get murdered, you know what I mean? Like, you listen to Maybe, dubstep. maybe if he clicked on the same one we clicked in, it's like, open your eyes. They thought yeah, it was like okay, the yeah. devil telling Yeah, that's probably the one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's understandable. And the words of shaitan, music, they cannot mix in the same heart. They no longer listen to Quran because they are listening to the nasheed. They are listening to the nasheed. And how many a person, how many people, they left music altogether right. and they came to Quran. And then shaitan came and whispered to them. And then they started to listen to nasheed. And it started with the nasheed that there were no instruments. There was no backing music and they are singing about good things. But then shaitan came again and then the music, musical instruments, they begin to come in. And now they have slipped full back into listening to music. I want to mention some of the fatawa, some of the religious rulings that some of the scholars have mentioned about this. Sheikh Saleh Al-Fawzan, Hafidhullah, he was asked about nasheeds, which are sung, these songs which are sung without backing or instruments. And he says, we do not know any basis for them. They are innovations. And if they are attributed to Islam and they are called Islamic nasheeds, then this would mean that they have, they, that they must have been legislated in Islam. But rather, there is no basis for this. Briefly, we mentioned about nasheeds and how they have become now basically like music. Even though they may be singing one or two songs which bring you closer to Allah, but the vast majority in general, they are resembling the music of the non-Muslim. Mm. Allah says, help one another in goodness and, uh, yeah, piety, like and subscribe. Yeah, listen, I understand why you would believe if you're a very devout Muslim, why you wouldn't want to listen to music. But for me personally, I just don't see how listening to music will derail me in any way. It's like the, the opinion that playing Call of Duty will make you shoot up a school. Like maybe some people, like one like 0.1% of people. But for me, I can play COD and separate that from real life. The same way I can listen to Polo G and separate that from my life. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like what do you do if you're like, let's say at the gym or like long drive somewhere? You just like sit in silence? Or well, that can be good. That, I don't think that's a good example because if you're going for a long drive, you might want to reflect on your own thoughts. You might go for a drive and not listen to music. But if you're in the gym, right, which was a good example, and you're just working out and you have nobody there, you have no buddies or anything, it's just nice to have some music in your ear. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what about the music that plays in the gym? Right. Exactly. It, I, listen, man, we don't all have to agree. That's the beautiful thing about life. But yeah, I, I understand why him as a devout Muslim would follow those rules. I just think that for me personally, I don't know. I just don't see the upside. I like the. The, the benefits do not outweigh the negatives. So basically, I'm going to have a slightly less demonic life, slightly because it doesn't affect my life in any way, but slightly less demonic life. And the benefit is that, or and that's the benefit. And then the negative is I can't listen to music anymore. I don't 